the day that the shooting season begins. Mm. Um, that's the 12th of August. And we'll use that to get communities around Scotland to, to highlight whatever difficulties they're having with land in whatever way they want. And that's what's happened for the last wee while. So now we've had our little frenzy of activity. Our last big event of this season, if you like, will be a fringe meeting at the SNP conference on October the 16th, which is already actually full. So many people have already said they want to come and we simply can't find bigger premises to move to. Mm, well, if there are bigger premises for that, where could people try and get a ticket or do they have to be SNP member? No, it's open to it's open to the public. But I mean, at the moment, I think we've got about 20 spare spaces and just in the hope that you know people perhaps won't turn up. So it, it's difficult to know what to say to people about turning up because if we get overwhelmed, I'm not quite sure what we'll do. But it's the British Legion in the Bridge of Dawn and it's on at 6.30 on Friday the 16th of October. And if you kind of Google or look anywhere on our, our land, um, you'll you'll find the details. Mm. We are trying to find a bigger premises, but we seem to just not be able to find anything. Shouldn't really symbolically you do it on, shouldn't you kind of invade a piece of derelict land for the day and do it there? Yeah, and pray that it doesn't rain, howl with wind, you know, whatever else. <laughs> I mean, we could do that. Um, the, the question is whether the SNP delegates would feel like they wanted to come on what will inevitably be the wettest day from hell. Um, so we could have done that if it was the summer, just banked on having a bit of a decent weather. But um, I think at the moment we might find that difficult. I think we're going to either film it and or have Indy Live to come and um, stream it. So I hope people will, will be able to join in that way. Um, Andy Whiteman, myself and Robin McAlpine will be speaking. So it'll be, uh, there'll be pretty well every aspect of land covered. It's a shame we just can't. The the cost of managing to get in as a fringe event to the SNP conference is pretty jaw dropping. It's nine hundred quid for a stall for a voluntary organisation, and we have no funds whatsoever. We've just contributed our own cash to do this. Um, and if you're inside the complex, then the public can't come. So what we've been trying to do is find a bigger venue outside. But despite trying practically everywhere for the last couple of weeks, we can't find anything that's close enough to the places that the conference delegates will be and will know um, because if we have it away out in the, you know, the beaten track we're very unlikely to be able to persuade them to come so there's our wee dilemma oh well uh, i'm sure it will go well however you manage to do it but um thanks a lot for coming on leslie and talking about that uh, can i just say there's yeah the one thing that people could do is sign up for a petition that we've had on 38 degrees if you just look for our land you'll find it it all the demands, if you like, that I've outlined. Um, and why it's really important that people do this is that it's a tremendous resource for us because um, you, you register your email when you sign up on 38 degrees. And that means that if we find there's one day which is very important where we need everybody to maybe email an MSP or email a minister or gather, we can do it really effectively. And for a bunch of volunteers, that kind of data is incredibly useful to have so there's a whole number of reasons why why going in and signing up on that thing is very, very important for us. So if I could ask everyone to do it, well, here I am. I'm asking you to do it. OK, I'll stick the link on the blog page as well. Um, Great. OK, thanks very much, Leslie. It's been, it's been wonderful. OK, thanks a lot. <laughs> so there you go. That was Leslie Ritter. For more information on this topic, there's several places you could go to. There's the Our Land website, which we were talking about there, which is ourland.scot. There's also the ScottishLandActionMovement.org website, which is useful. WhoOwnsScotland.org.uk is another useful website. And then there's also information you can find, as usual, on sites like Commonweal and other places as well. I hope this has inspired you to maybe get involved a bit more in this uh, very important campaign. And after this conversation, there's only one song we can play out with, which is from a play which was recently put on. I imagine you know which one it is. OK, speak to you next time. The Scottish Office, the Highlands and Islands Development Board, and the Palace of Westminster, whether they admit it or not, are the servants of the men who own and control the land. Who owns the land? The same families. The McLeods, the Lovetts, the Argyles, the Macdonalds, the Sinclairs, the Creighton Stewarts, and the Sutherlands. Plus the Westminsters, the property dealers, the shipowners, the construction men, the brewers, the distillers, the textile men, the sauce makers, the mustard kings, the merchant bankers, the new ruling class. We 
are the men who own your glen, no, you won't, won't see, see us there. In Edinburgh clubs and Guildford pubs, we insist how much we care. Your interests are ours, my friend, from Gold Speed to the Minch. But if you want your land, we'll take a stand, we will not budge one inch. Sir Halibut Peak. <laughs> Sir Halbert Hake said, for goodness sake, a road right through my ground. It can't go there, and I don't care, let him drive the whole way round. A man of my class must have a bypass, and the whole thing must be banned. And they must pay to keep out of my way, it cost them 40 grand. <laughs> Dr. Spleen of Surrey. <laughs> Dr. Spleen of Surrey is in no hurry for a ferry to cross the sound. You want to peer, oh no, not here, I need that patch of ground. This island, she belongs to me, as all you peasants know. And I'm quite merry, cos I need no ferry, cos I never intend to go. <laughs> the Minister of Defence. The Minister of Defence, he is not dense, he knows just what he's found. The place to test torpedoes best is right up Razzy Sound. A few bombs, two in a year or two, you can hear the people groan. This water's ours, so NATO powers go test them up your own. <laughs> Continental tour operator. <laughs> Herr Heinrich Haas, it is wunderbar to shoot animals, is it not? For a reasonable sum, you can pepper their bum with bullets and a buckshot. You may call us crouts, cos we're after your trouts, but we'll listen, you Scottish fine. This is part of a plan that first began in 1939. <laughs> we are the men who own your glen, though you won't see us there. In Edinburgh clubs and Guildford pubs, we insist how much we care. Your interests are ours, my friend from Goldsby to the Minch. But if you want your land, we'll take a stand. We will not budge one inch. We will not budge one inch. That song is The Men Who Own Your Glen from the 1974 play The Cheviot, The Stag and The Black Black Oil.